Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal. On this channel, man, we must continue to put some respect on Michael Jordan. We must continue to set the record straight. Stop the lies. Stop the narratives. Stop them from rewriting the history. That's what it's been about in this channel. You guys know that, man. And in this video, we're going to talk about how Michael Jordan helped his teammates help him. Because when we hear all this talk going on right now, you know, about, you know, the Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant, Luke Longley, and just Michael Jordan in general, right? They're always trying to give Michael Jordan's teammates all of this credit, right? They're always trying to act as if, you know, you no, know, Michael Jordan had this guy and Michael Jordan had that guy. And, you know, it's always, oh, this guy helped Michael Jordan here and this guy helped Michael Jordan here, right? And we're going to talk about how Michael Jordan helped his teammates help him, right? How he allowed them, right, to be great in their roles. Talk about in this video. I want to thank you guys, everyone across the world, man, everyone across the states, man. Much respect to all you guys out there, man. Once again, truly humbling by the support, guys. Shout out to everybody in the membership, man. For real, guys. Much respect to all you guys. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, man, I wanted to do this video speaking about how Michael Jordan helped his teammates help him. Because... Like I said, all this talk that's been going on right now, you know, Scottie Pippen, like I said, the Horace Grant, the Luke Longleys, but just in generalities, when you hear people try to take away from Michael Jordan's greatness, what do they always try to do? It's one of two things. Either they try to tear down Michael Jordan's era, right? That's the classic tear down, right? Oh, the 90s. Ugh. The 90s was watered down expansion. There, right? These classic, right, sound bites you hear these corny people say. There was nobody in the 90s, right? But at the same time, Scottie Pippen was that great, right? I told you, it, it can't be both, right? Or what do they say? Right? Michael Jordan played with Scottie Pippen. Michael Jordan played with Dennis Rodman or whatever the case may be, right? They make it seem as if only Michael Jordan had help, any kinds of help to win the championship, right? So they're constantly talking about Michael Jordan teammates did this. Michael, right? They'll talk about Steve Kerr. Like, this guy was an all-star player. Like, he was carrying the Bulls. Oh, Michael Jordan had Steve Kerr. Meanwhile, like I've always told you guys, it was Michael Jordan who allowed these players, the role players that Michael Jordan played with, to be great in their roles. When you hear people say, Scottie Pippen is the greatest Robin of all time, what are they doing? Without even realizing it, they're labeling Scottie Pippen as a role player. Right? He played the role of what? Of Robin, so to speak. Right? He was not the leader, so he played a role besides the leader. Right? Beside him. So he played bes beside Michael Jordan, who was the unquestioned leader, the unquestioned best player. Scottie Pippen played that role. So when you hear people like me say Scottie Pippen was a role player, that's not a knock on Scottie Pippen. Like we say, or like you hear people say, the greatest Robin in NBA's history. The greatest sidekick in NBA's history. Right? Sidekick. That's a role. Okay? So once again, when people try to say these things to take away from Michael Jordan, they don't even realize all they're doing is highlighting that fact. That Michael Jordan, in fact, enhanced everyone else and allowed them to play their role. So when they named guys like Steve Kerr, it was Michael Jordan, right? Who allowed Steve Kerr to be great. He allowed Steve Kerr, right, to make that shot. He said to Steve Kerr on the bench, hey, man, if they come off of you, I'm going to come to you. They double up. And Steve Kerr said, what? I'll be ready. And why was Steve Kerr ready? Through all the hard work and the practices that he put in with Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan holding Steve Kerr to that standard, the standard of excellence, instilling the confidence in him, in him. You know, sometimes these idiots, they'll be like, oh, man, you talk about confidence like that's a big deal. That's the only deal when it comes to a role player is the confidence they have on that court to step into a shot like that in a game six of an NBA Finals. When the greatest player in the world looks you in the eye and says, yo, I'm coming to you. What you going to do? Steve Kerr was prepared. Once again, Michael Jordan allowing him to be great in his role because Michael Jordan trusted him. He developed that trust how? Through the practices. This wasn't just through him passing him the ball in a live game. 
during a regular season? No, you establish this in practice. The things that we don't see, the work that they put in together. Michael Jordan allowed all these guys to be great. He allowed Scottie Pippen to be that sidekick. And he actually allowed him to be greater by holding him to that standard, pushing him in practice. Scottie Pippen challenging Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan not holding back and going right at him, right? Forcing Scottie Pippen to say, hey, Mike, chill. That's what Craig Hodges said. Michael Jordan, they said, Craig Hodges said, from 1989 to 1992, the three years that Craig Hodges played on the Chicago Bulls, he said Michael Jordan never lost a suicide sprint in practice. Never lost a suit. Are you, anyone that knows about suicide sprints, you know how difficult these things are. He said he never lost one for three seasons straight. And he said guys like Scottie Pippen, right? And these other guys would try to go at him. Horace Grant, they would try to challenge him on the suicides. Never lost one. Not one. This is the standard he's holding. He's the bar. He's the leader. Unquestioned. Michael Jordan helped his teammates help him. Without them, he doesn't win. All these years later, some of these idiot people talk as if Michael Jordan took his teammates for granted. As if, once again, they never got the shine. They act as if Michael Jordan always took the credit, never took the blame. Pointed the finger at them. Talked about them in post-game press conferences. Had these guys traded behind their backs. He never did any of these things, Michael Jordan. All he did was take all of the blame and deflect the credit onto other guys. Like a Scottie Pippen. Or Horace Grant, who we allowed to come in once again and fulfill that role of the power forward for the Chicago Bulls and pushing him in practice. Where were these guys against the Detroit Pistons when they couldn't get over the hump? People act like the, the Bulls couldn't get over the hump because it was Michael Jordan. Oh, man, where was Michael Jordan in 89? Where was Mike? Are you kidding me? If you watch the games, if you watch them, what you'll see and what you'll notice is that the Bulls probably should have won definitely in 1990 and they probably could have won in 89. But what happened was none of the other guys were mentally on that level yet. Mentally, it was mental. It wasn't the physical game, the actual game. They had the game. What they didn't have was the mentality because of guys like Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, right? Some of these other guys, they went on that level. When Michael Jordan needed them to be there, they weren't there. Watch the film, guys. Even in 1991 of the NBA Finals, if you watch that game, what you'll notice once again, and I've told you guys before, that the other Bulls players, you could tell they were really nervous out there. Everyone except for Michael Jordan, you could just watch it. You could see it on the court. The way Horace Grant moved, Scottie Pippen, they played nervous. Even the veterans like Bill Cartwright, Cliff Livingston, the Paxons, you could tell they were playing tight. Not Michael Jordan, though. And the Lakers won that game. Once again, it was Michael Jordan who had to continue to push his teammates. Once again, they did not get traded. All those guys stayed there. That's what made them great. The chemistry over the years. But it took that development. It took the Michael Jordan pushing them. Helping his teammates help him. Because what did he say? He said when Scottie Pippen came in, I didn't know what was going to happen. He's like, but they, they, the coaches said that Michael Jordan saw potential in him through the practices. And that's why he pushed him so much because he saw it. He didn't give up on him in 89 when he got the elbow in the head from Bill Lane Beer. And he only played two minutes and came out the game in game six. He didn't get him traded and turn on him in 1990. When he had the migraine and he scored two points in a game seven of an Eastern Conference Finals, he didn't point the finger at Scottie Pippen. He didn't blame him, the migraine. Michael Jordan went back the next season and they continued to work. And then the next season, they still had a push through. Go watch the 1991 Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons. Watch it. It's a four-game-to-zero sweep. 
But when you watch the games, what you'll see and what you'll notice is that the Detroit Pistons, who were not on the level with the Bulls, right? Skill-wise, Michael Jordan was matured, right? Pippen was coming into age. Grant, the chemistry was there now. But what you saw was the Bulls not backing down mentally, but the Pistons trying to use it still, right? As a, almost like a last effort, a last-ditch effort. Remember, going into game three, down 2 nothing. Isaiah Thomas said, going back to Detroit, that was going to be the hardest game the Chicago Bulls were ever going to play in their entire careers. That's what he said. They were not going to get swept, he said. He beat them 4 to nothing. And if you remember during point, uh, certain points of that series, different games, Michael Jordan getting in Mark Aguirre's face, I believe in game one or game two, after Mark Aguirre was trying to get up in Pippen's face and was trying to push Pippen around. What you'll see is Horace Grant getting knocked down to the ground with an elbow, right? And going down to one knee and Michael Jordan coming over to him and picking him up and being, hey man, don't let them see you hurt. This is what they want from us. It's not going to happen this year. He helped them help him. He didn't suppress any of his teammates. This is why he maximized them, because he allowed them to flourish. He didn't try to hog the spotlight on the court. Remember 1991 game five? Phil Jackson asked him, yo, who's open? And he said, yeah, Paxson's open. Well, then give him the ball. Michael Jordan didn't say, nah, man, I got this. He said, you're right. And he humbled himself and passed the ball to Paxson. He allowed Paxson to help him. Go ahead, John. Do your thing, baby. That's why we're prepared for this moment. I got confidence in you. And Paxson proceeded to knock him down. Right? Paxson in 93. Right? Pippen. Horace Grant. All these guys. B.J. Armstrong. You hear what B.J. Armstrong says about Michael Jordan practice? He says, I wish we had video cameras for practice. They were often harder than games. This B.J. Armstrong, you think Michael Jordan didn't help him help him? B.J. Armstrong, man, was a vital part of these teams. See, this is the thing. All these guys that we mentioned, the Luke Longleys, right? The Bill Winningtons, the Cliff Levingstons, right? The Horace, no, the Horace Grants, the Randy Browns, the Judd Bushers, the Bob Hansons. All these guys who played five, ten minutes maybe in an NBA Finals game, right? One time or another, they played some minutes they were significant minutes. They were quality minutes. They could rely on these guys. And Michael Jordan trusted them. Because he allowed them to play their roles and be successful in, them, in those roles. Everyone played a role. Michael Jordan, once again, guys, did not try to hog all the, the credit, all the spotlight, because all he wanted to do was win. So if your main focus is winning, then you're going to help everyone else help you win. Think about that. That should be your main focus, to get your help to get on your level so that it makes you stronger as a, com as a, comp a, a competition, as competitors, as a team. What did Michael Jordan say? I had to push and pull people along when they didn't want to get pushed or pulled sometimes. That's, you got to get everybody with you. You want to win. You don't want to average 30 points a game and lose. You want to win. So he knew what he had to do. And he made sure that they knew what they had to do. And he gave them the confidence and gave them that opportunity. He let Steve Kerr make that shot. Right? It was Horace Grant who kicked it out to John Paxson for that three. Right? We think about some of these things. All through the years, you think about different games in Michael Jordan's career in the Bulls. This guy stepped up here in this game. This guy stepped up in that game. Right? Whoever it was, they made a play. Dennis Rodman, Ron Harper. Right? He allowed these guys to play their roles and be great in their roles. And you know what, guys? When you think about all this at the end of the day, with all the Michael Jordan teammate stuff and how people try to always say, you know, give Michael Jordan's teammates all this credit as if no one else ever had teammates. At the end of all of this stuff, guys, these guys appreciated their roles. They appreciate their roles. That's why it doesn't make any sense for guys, some of these guys to be, you know, disgruntled, so to speak, because you guys helped and you guys were not, not appreciated. They were always appreciated. The Luke Longley, like I said, the Ron Harpers, Dennis Rodman, right? Bison Dele, Bill Wennington, Bill Cartwright. All these guys were appreciated, right? 
Scott Burrell. They all were appreciated, man. And they all filled a role. They helped the Chicago Bulls win. No one ever lost sight of these things. Only Michael Jordan is not allowed to have all the credit, right? He's on most of the credit. He can't have most of the credit like he deserves, right? No, they must bring up Phil Jackson. They must bring up Jerry Krause. Who have, have you ever heard anybody bring up a general manager when they talk about the greatest players of all time? Oh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know, he wouldn't have been anything if they didn't have Jerry West as a general manager of the Lakers. Really? Only Jerry Krause is brought up for Michael Jordan in these kinds of silly debates with these idiots who make these comments. Phil Jackson, no else, nobody else's coach is brought up. Only Phil Jackson from Michael Jordan. All of his minute teammates, the last guys you think of, the Scott Burrells, the Dickie Simpkins, right? The Bison Deles, right? The Brian, the Brian Williams. Oh, excuse me, not Brian Williams. The Stacey Kings, the Scott Williams. Only these, uh, Michael Jordan, these guys are brought, these kinds of guys are brought up. Does anybody bring up the other guys that Tim Duncan played with? Tim Duncan played with Steve Kerr. Does anybody bring him up? No. Played with Steven Jackson. He played with Steve Smith. Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, David Robinson. He played with all kinds of guys. Kawhi Leonard. I mean, what are we saying here? Right? Kobe Bryant played with great players. Where are the Lakers, right, in their three-peat run without Robert Ory making that shot against the Kings? He didn't step up and make a shot. He didn't help. He didn't play a role. He played his role. He made a shot. No one ever brings these things up. No one else had teammates that have made plays. When you hear people talk about Hakeem Olajuwon, the Houston Rockets, they don't like, Hakeem Olajuwon had nobody. Sam Cassell hit some big shots, guys. Some big shots. Pretty sure Robert Ory was on the Rockets when they won those championships. Was he not? Pretty sure he was. He had some big shots, didn't he? Sam Cassell was big. Kenny Smith wasn't there. We know about Clyde Drexler, but Otis Thorpe in the first one. Like, they bring up Horace Grant. Otis Thorpe was just as good as, as Horace Grant. And he was more mentally tougher than Horace Grant and more, like this is just more grittier than a Horace Grant. He wasn't the athlete of a Horace Grant, but Otis Thorpe was a damn good player in the NBA, man. No one brings up these guys, Vernon Maxwell. And this is not to take anything away from Hakeem Olajuwon. But once again, how could they own? Why is always Michael Jordan? We're bringing up Luke Longley with Michael, Steve Kerr. Once again, Steve Kerr played for the Spurs. Bring up Steve Kerr when you talk about Tim Duncan then. I don't, I don't get it. It don't make any sense. Right? Bill Russell played with some great players. Does anybody bring up John? No one ever talks about John Havlicek, who I consider greater than Scottie Pippen. No one brings him up. No. Bob Cousy, is Bob Cousy not better than John Paxson or B.J. Armstrong? But we're bringing up B.J. Armstrong and John Paxson as if these guys were saving Michael Jordan's career without these guys. No, without his teammates being there for him, right, due to he, him helping them be there, then yes, he would not win. It's a team sport. At the end of the day, we understand these things. But when we talk about Michael jo Jordan getting most of the credit, there should be no, you know, Reason why these guys don't understand this. Why they don't understand why Michael Jordan deserved most of the credit. He earned most of the credit. He did most of the work. Pushing those guys in practice every day is not easy. Pushing yourself every day. Not losing a suicide sprint in three damn years. Are you kidding me? That's a standard this man held himself to. But he don't deserve the credit that he got. Once again, at the end of all this, guys, the main thing here is that Michael Jordan helped his teammates be on that level. He gave them them roles. They succeeded in those roles. They appreciated that. And Michael Jordan always appreciated them for playing their roles that way. Their rebounding, their hustle, showing up to work, showing up to practice. He praised these guys' his whole career. So we must remember these things. He helped these guys help him. He allowed them to play in the triangle. He didn't run Phil Jackson out of town. He allowed these guys to be successful because he wanted to win. Everyone, every other superstar that's won, right at a high level, they had help. 
They had role players that stepped up and made plays in a playoff game here, an NBA Finals game there. Are you kidding me? Most of the players, the all-time great players, right, since they've been giving out the, the Finals MVP award, they haven't won every Finals MVP award, and that's just a, a basic description or, 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 or just a, a one point. But guys have made shots, a key free throw, a key rebound, a steal. Maybe they took a charge. Maybe someone got a, a key rebound and called a quick timeout. Someone made a heads-up play. No one brings these other guys' moments up. Only for Michael Jordan do they must continue to bring up all the other guys that were there. And they'll make it seem like, once again, like these guys were all-time greats. Steve Kerr's an all-time great. His three-point percentage in the NBA Finals on the Chicago Bulls is 25%. 25. I don't even believe he's in the top 100 in NBA Finals history, guys, in three-point percentage. Those are the facts. But they always bring up Steve Kerr like he was knocking jumpers down. No, he was not. He was not. He wasn't knocking down jumpers like Sam Jones was for Bill Russell. He wasn't knocking down shots like Robert Ory for some of these other guys. And once again, Scottie Pippen played his role, right? He's the greatest Robin of all time. He's the great sidekick of all time. That's a role, y'all. Remember that. And Michael Jordan allowed him to be great in that role. And that's why Scottie Pippen asked him to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Because he understood that Michael Jordan helped him, help him. He allowed him to be great next to Michael Jordan. And he knows deep down he would never be as great as he was playing next to somebody else. Because it was Michael Jordan in practice. Practice, guys. Holding these guys to the standard that made them great. So when Michael Jordan passed it to Luke Longley in the 1996 NBA Finals, he'll knock that jumper down. You guys know the deal, man. Once again, we must continue to put some respect on Michael Jordan. Set the record straight here. Michael Jordan helped his teammates help him. He gave them roles, and they all excelled in those roles. He gave them the confidence. He believed in them, and they believed in him. That's why they followed him, guys. Don't matter what they say. The results are there. 6-0, Chicago Bulls. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.